everybody. In this video, I'm going to reveal, based on lengthy research and a lot of reading, just precisely what I think the Great Pyramid is, when it was built, and what for. It was an interferometer built to detect the interference pattern between coherent light waves distorted by gravitational waves. Basically, it's based upon ideas currently at the forefront of our current science. I believe it was built in the early days of a lost super civilization. A sort of 19th or 20th century equivalent, except 100,000 years ago. And then this civilization advanced well beyond the technology exhibited inside the Great Pyramid. And this technology is recorded in texts from India. I think this is my best video so far, the best information. I cannot take credit for this discovery. Uh, I think it is a very, very, very great discovery. A person left a comment on my channel a while back, I do not know where, that the Great Pyramid is indeed an interferometer. And I pondered it for a while, and yes, I have to absolutely agree. That is exactly what it is. It's the only thing that seems to really, really fit quite well. We will soon get on to what this device is, how it works, and when the whole contraption was possibly constructed. Firstly, my credentials. People who are new to my channel, they write bad things. Uh, they might think I'm uneducated. They unduly claim in repetitive and tedious and incorrect comments that I'm making wild claims. On the contrary, I'm very conservative based on what the evidence seems to be telling me. Anything which is new is perceived by the brain as wild and unbelievable anyway. It doesn't have to be ancient mysteries. People are asking uh, about my education in the comments, so let me set the record straight. I have um, Australian equivalent of an Ivy League education times three, three degrees uh, from the group of eight universities, which is our equivalent to the Ivy League in science as well as humanities, Latin, history, classics, archaeology, etc., and a PhD in history. So I've made education and knowledge my life and life's work. And to get a PhD, you need to be the best in the world at what you do, which for me is history. So please don't tell me I'm ignorant. Please don't say that. Okay. So I've noticed a pattern. We come from a lineage of very clever humans whose history has been almost totally erased by the passage of time. And one disaster after another re-emerging in the past 10,000 years on a transformed warmer world. I call the great former empire the lost super civilization and I place it before our stone age when humans are currently thought to have first emerged about 70,000 years ago. Ever since I came up with this idea, uh, I've never once swayed from it because it keeps making sense. The Bible references this time as when all the world was one language. It is through this paradigm that I'm able to interpret ancient mysteries in a hopefully clearer way than currently possible. agree with uh, Christopher Dunn that the pyramid is a power plant. That idea is enticing, but only because there is indeed some scientific high engineering basis behind the pyramid. To me, it has always felt wrong, and power plants always have a, a large internal area. The Great Pyramid is the opposite of this. Small chambers stretched out across great distances. It's an insulator of sorts, surely, and a dampener by its sheer mass. 
it also has almost perfectly straight, narrow internal passages. For what reason? There must be one. The Great Pyramid is large because it possibly needs to be. I believe the answer is geological damping against Earth vibrations for purposes of making accurate scientific measurements, possibly trying to measure gravitational waves. In the early days of looking for delicate gravitational waves, it was suggested that one would not be able to distinguish gravity waves from the background noise of the Earth shifting underneath the detector. So, why not encase such a detector in a large, well-built, heavy structure resistant to movement? Indeed, the Great Pyramid has settled far less than every modern, much smaller skyscraper. The Great Pyramid has never struck me as a machine, rather a stone structure built around a machine to protect and conceal and enable it to give accuracy to its function. The Great Pyramid is an instrument, but its internal attachments have been stripped out long ago. So what type of instrument? A large scale one. Does it look like a particle accelerator? No, not really. But it does have beam tunnels splitting away the so-called star shafts or air shafts as if it were based on the science of a people who understood particle accelerators. You will note that a particle accelerator, a cyclotron, is a circle, high energy light. North, this is north of x-rays, beaming round and round and shafts shooting off to run experiments with different uh, parts of the beam. The beam is split up and different experiments are run. But it is not a particle accelerator. Particle acceleration knowledge may have been present, however, when it was built. Just look at it. Does it look like an interferometer? Yes, it does. Let us say we wish to detect gravitational waves. A simple interferometer has shafts of equal length at right angles. A coherent light beam is split and bounced down the shaft in two directions. It rebounds off a mirror and then the light beams join. Each wave theoretically cancels the other out. The wavelength must be coherent, pure light. A theoretical gravitational wave occurs when, say, objects collide in deep space, causing a ripple which would stretch and distort the actual fabric of space. So if the wave passes through us, we would say elongate a little, briefly. A gravitational wave passing through the interferometer would stretch the light path, so one of the directional shaft's light beam would be distorted more than the other. When the light beams return, they are no longer coherent with one another. They cannot cancel each other out. A distortion is therefore detected. If we examine the Great Pyramid, we see two huge shafts of equal length. Both are tremendously accurate. The descending shaft leading to the subterranean chamber the ascending shaft leading to the so-called King's Chamber.
A Stone Age economy as Khufu's was can barely put a decent army together, barely provide decent houses for its subjects. Forget about having to build this. Once you perhaps, uh, once we perhaps begin to appreciate that only a worldwide economy can build something like this is when we start to appreciate it from an advanced science perspective. All the other pyramids are Stone Age imitations of this technological age one. But with the knowledge that, uh, that the Teotihuacan Pyramid of the Sun, supposedly built by the gods according to the natives, has the same base area as the Great Pyramid, we can expand the scope of this ancient experiment. How about that the Sun Pyramid in Mexico is a primitive replacement for a destroyed older pyramid which actually matched the Great Pyramid? explaining the, the same area of the base. With two great pyramids, you can do the same experiment in two places, both hoping to capture a large gravitational wave. And by checking the difference in result, you can possibly nullify Earth vibration with other instruments from the result. I suppose that's just one way how this might have worked. In a way that today observatories with delicate instruments are stretched across the globe in a huge, unified, computerized, synchronized system. And of course, why is it the Pyramid of the Sun uh, in the first place? Why is it called that? And why did the Egyptians also always worship the sun? Khufu would have seen glyphs of the sun and high-tech diagrams carved into the pyramid now vanished. He seems to have been a monotheist, I think, worshipping the sun himself or his uh, goat god Knum, who later became the devil. You see, sunlight would be very useful in an interferometer experiment. This would explain the star shafts. Sunlight beamed down the shafts with lenses could be used as the light in the experiments. You cannot use lamps or firelight or even electric light. None of this is coherent light, but it is very messy light. The sun is so far away that its light is coherent, easy to split with glass. This is why Isaac Newton used the sun and not the flame or, or some other light to create the rainbow effect. Light beaming down the so-called air shafts reached the chambers, was then directed down the wider shafts. When the Egyptians arrived, they saw diagrams of the sun in the ancient technical schematics and began to worship it. In addition, heat rises, so I think the stones above the chamber are a kind of heat sink. I think the king's chamber is actually designed to get very hot, but only in case of accident and not as a primary function. If you are beaming in concentrated amounts of sunlight from some solar furnace, I guess you have got to be very careful. Ark of the Covenant? That's a high energy device. Supposedly the sarcophagus matches the dimensions. I think it matches one of the descriptions of the dimensions. I think the Ark and the Pyramid certainly do go together in a set, maybe, but the sarcophagus as, as it is in the King's Chamber is surely a flimsy imitation of the Ark, a replacement of the Ark, built by a superstitious people in later times, just as the Tutankhamun Ark and all the other arcs are all imitations, and every arc that's been ever depicted are all imitations of what the Bible was trying to describe, trying to somehow honor the past and their ancestors and gods by doing this. I think most of the quarrying done around Giza was not to build the pyramid, but other structures. Uh, the Khufu and uh, Said dynasties, or even the Romans, 
It was done by them, making extensive modifications and repairs. I think that hated Khufu severely tampered with and modified the pyramid, explaining every single element of his presence there. I'm still troubled by a few things. The red paint found in one of the shafts and also in the recesses above the king's chamber, which do I suppose point to Khufu Stone Age? But I'm sticking to the super civilization, super civilization hypothesis for now for the reasons I've explained. I hypothesized in an earlier video that um, Khufu had the face of his hated daughter carved into the Sphinx. I think there is a, a kind of match with the illustration of Nefertiabit, if that's who it is, remembered as a harlot, even in, uh, in Herodotus's time. They must have been terribly hated. Consulting the Bible, we see that at one time, it claims before a great disaster, all the world was one language and used the same words. Now I want to ask you, what is the mechanism for this? Today, our world is almost all one language, English. And the mechanism is advanced science, high technology, rapid transit and a world empire. It was the British Empire. You need a civilization like ours for the world to be one language, and I also think you need a civilization like ours to build the Great Pyramid. You really do. In the science fiction book Gateway by Frederick Pohl, the Heechee are aliens who leave IQ test puzzles behind. Is this one huge IQ test that we have not yet passed? Thank you. I absolutely believe this is what the pyramid is. It could be very wrong, but this is the only way the overall situation seems to make sense to me anyway. Um, what was this strange, brilliant type of human who built the Great Pyramid?